Hi guys, gonna do the video that I said I'd do yesterday in my little studio tour, which is basically my favourite books. Now these are mainly guitar, but they're not all guitar. It's sort of theory and transcriptions and things like that as well. I did talk a little bit yesterday about the mixing secrets of the small studio, the Mike Senior book. I'm not gonna talk about that one today, okay, but it's a brilliant book, so make sure you remember that one as well. First up, this book here. Solfage, Ear Training, Rhythm Dictation and Music Theory. It's as exciting as it sounds. However, it was very, very important for me in my ear training, essentially, and that was what my teacher made me do. Although it's not the most exciting book in the world, it is a brilliant book and it really does what it says on the tin, okay? So if you're struggling to hear phrases, you're struggling with anything really, for anything from improvising to music theory, I would recommend that book there by Marta Arcosi Gezzo. So check that out. Second book here is by Eric Roche. Um, now, Eric Roche used to write for Guitar Techniques magazine. He died a couple of years ago. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly when. There's a track on Guthrie Govan's Erotic Cakes album called Eric, and that's a tribute to Eric Roche. Um, the reason I'm recommending this book, I haven't actually got a huge amount out of this book in terms of, I mean, it's a pretty big book. I've not really looked at much of it. However, this is the book that I bothered to sit down and learn my modes from when I was starting with my guitar playing. So that was quite a long time ago now. But I still remember, it's almost like a photographic memory, the, the little uh, paragraph about modes and I remember sitting down and just forcing myself to memorise them on a weekend. If you're struggling with your modes, I'd massively recommend Eric Roche, The Acoustic Guitar Bible. Not that it's any better than any other description of modes or anything like that, but it's the one that finally uh, clicked for me. Steve Vai, Passion and Warfare. Good stuff. I must admit I'm currently not too into instrumental rock anymore, although I used to be absolutely obsessed with it. The reason I've got this book is I, for whatever reason, um, found Surfing with the Alien on my computer. I think my older brother had maybe put it on there. I couldn't for the life of me, this is before, before we had the internet, I couldn't work out what the track was. And I asked my brother, I asked a few people and people said, oh, it's probably Steve Vai. I went and bought uh, with a Christmas voucher for HMV, I think it was, I went and bought Passion and Warfare, the CD, which actually, seeing as we're here, I've still got. Here he is. Passion and Warfare, 8 99 I paid for that. That was quite a long time ago now. Yeah, HMV, 8 99 there you go. So, I bought that CD um, just because I couldn't find the Steve Vai surfing with the alien disc. Well, of course, that's because Surfing with the Alien isn't by Steve Vai, it's by Mr. Satriani. I got hugely hooked on Passion and Warfare, as most guitarists do, especially in their teens. I would sit and put the album on and just try and sight read my way through this, which is um, a suicide mission, but it's how I used to fill my time. So if you're one of those players who wants to get chops and you want to be tapping and shredding and alternate picking, and all that sweet Steve Vai stuff, sweet picking, then you can't really go much better than um, learning from the master himself. On a similar note, although I, I've no longer got the book, I would recommend the Ingve Malmsteen transcription book as well, because Ingve does things in a slightly different way to everyone else, and he's well worth learning from. That's it in terms of my older books that I no longer really look at, although I do open them every now and then for a bit of fun. So next up, this is one that I'm studying a lot of the minute, uh, and this is one of the books that especially jazz guys and fusion guys will recommend you read. And this is The Advancing Guitarist by Mick Goodrick. If you don't know who Mick Goodrick is, he's uh, done a lot of work with Pat Metheny. I think he was actually Pat Metheny's teacher, and he teaches at Berklee College of Music in Boston. This book is well worth having. The thing I really like about this book is that it doesn't tell you exactly what to do. He says things like, a guitarist might find it useful to write this all out. Obviously suggesting that you go away and do some work. So he doesn't give you all the answers, he gives you the method perhaps, or he suggests uh, several methods, and you go away and you really do the, the brain work. I think a lot of people expect a book to tell you, play these notes. It's a lot more useful and I think they stick better if you've gone away and worked those notes out by yourself. So that's The Advancing Guitarist by Mick Goodrick, absolutely brilliant book. It forces you to think about things that you've already learned in a new way. It's a really good way to sort of refresh your playing if you're one of those players, which I certainly am, where you've been doing it for a while and you find yourself playing the same old rubbish over and over again. This book's gonna really change that up for you. Next one is another Mick Goodrick, but this is with my favorite guitarist, Tim Miller. So this is Creative Chordal Harmony for Guitar and Using Generic Modality Compression by Tim Miller and Mick Goodrick. So that's uh, 
Mick Goodrick in the black and white photo there and Tim Miller looking good in colour. So this book's absolutely amazing. It's already a relatively thin book. You don't get much for your money here. To add to that, there's actually only about, I'd, I'd say in the entire book, there's about 10 or 15 pages of explanation. The rest of it, they've actually written the concepts up using notation. So they could really republish this book as more like a 15 page leaflet, really. I think it's best rather than relying on their write-ups if you go away and write those charts up yourself. That is a brilliant way not only to improve your chordal playing but also your lead playing because of course chords become arpeggios and arpeggios become lines. So check that one out, it's absolutely brilliant. Next up, The Essential Real Book. The Real Book is a book which you will never master no matter how good you are. You could be uh, Keith Jarrett, you could be Chick Corea, you could be Miles Davis. You've never mastered these tunes. You can always play them differently. You can always play them better. And I think that's that's my goal, is to every time I open this book, do something new with them. Do, try and play it a way that I haven't played before. There's hundreds of tunes in the real book. It's the Jazz Bible, guys. So check out the real book. If you don't own a real book, sort it out. Get on with it. Finally, these last three, these are my Miles Davis transcriptions. Um, so we've got Bill Evans, Miles Davis and John Coltrane. In my opinion, the Miles Davis band and its graduates are the best players in the world. So you can't go too far wrong than trying to learn some of their tunes. This Bill Evans book, very, very thin, but it's got some nice stuff in there. Well, every note in it's absolutely lovely. And it goes from some of his more chorale, chordy stuff to shredding. Although Bill's not, not much of a shredder. Um, he's far too tasteful for that. Miles Davis omni book we've got i mean i'll show you the contents page here got absolutely loads in there miles davis it's a lot easier to sight read the miles davis book than it is the john coltrane book because john coltrane is a dirty monster and he's a shredder uh, in the best sense of the word sight reading it is absolutely horrific i mean try sight reading that guys good luck so those are my favourite books. I genuinely believe that I will get a lifetime's worth of study out of all of these books. I will never master them. Uh, even the smallest book, which is probably probably the Creative Chordal Harmony for Guitar. N these books can't be mastered, but for the time being I'm trying to keep my selection of books as small as possible because I think you can be paralysed by choice about which book should I open today. It's a lot easier keeping track of what you're doing or what page you're on if you've only got a couple of books. Don't bog yourself down by buying hundreds and hundreds of transcription books. Think which transcriptions do you really, really need? Who would you really, really like to get inside the head of, player-wise? Buy their stuff and work on it. One last one which I haven't actually mentioned is I do have a, a Joe Pass transcription book as well. So that, that's a lovely, lovely book. But not one that I've actually dived into too much. That's maybe something that I'll work on more. Honourable mentions, Ted Green Chord Chemistry absolutely essential. Gustavo Assis Brazil, Hybrid Picking. Love that book. I know Guthrie's a huge fan of that. On the subject of which, Guthrie has his uh, creative guitar, I think he calls them. Oh, Cutting Edge Guitar, maybe. Guthrie's published two books. Go away and check those out, because it's Guthrie. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. Finally, the Holdsworth books as well. Holdsworth got quite a few books printed now. You've got to know your Holdsworth, so check out Holdsy's stuff. I hope you found that some of that useful. Like I say, the, the takeaway point is keep it small. The same with your studio gear, same with um, even your guitars and your pedals and all that sort of thing. Keep it to a minimum and you find that you're less distracted and you've got more time to actually focus and get stuff out of your practice time. Comment down below with some of your, your favourite books. I'm by no means claiming that these are the essential books that everyone must read and I'm more than happy to add another couple of books to my collection if you've got any good recommendations. So I hope you enjoyed that guys and as always see you next time. Cheers!